Alright, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP EliteBook 820G3. Um, this model, it, I mean this uh, computer actually seems like it was worked on before, so if anything is weird, just let me know. Um, but this is that. Alright, so give me a second. Alright, so we're going to be using a JS1 screwdriver and removing all the screws from the bottom. Uh, you want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. Um, one of these actually, uh, from how the customer brought it, this has like a spring on it. So you want to be careful uh, when you remove these screws. If the screws don't come out, just leave it there. Just unscrew it until you hear it click and... Yeah, just continue removing the screws. Normally, the when it has a spring like that, it's designed to kind of uh, help pop the cover up. So I'm not too sure why that's there, but yeah, I'm not sure if the customer like took it out from a different spot and just put it there, but yeah. All right, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, uh, share this channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well and subscribe if you can um, and if it helped you save a bunch of money please consider contributing a little to the channel every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living if you can't help out that way um, you could help out by watching a few of my other videos and then liking and commenting on those because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Anyways, don't forget to open this little SD card slot thing here. There's usually a screw under there as well, so make sure to remove that, but for some reason it's missing. Um, and then we're going to pull this cover off. And it came off really easily. I don't know if they broke the clips or if that's just how it is. I don't really see any clips here, so. All right, so there we go. Um, we're just going to look inside quickly to see what's in here. So it looks like there's a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive slot here. But if you're using this SSD, um, you're not going to be able to use that slot. Um, I don't know if they're using... Uh, I don't know if there's an M.2 SATA or M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. Um, the notch is in the slot that should technically support a PCIe NVMe SSD, which is faster. So I would recommend using that if you can. This battery, if you need to remove it, there's two screws here. And then you can kind of just get underneath this plastic tab and just pull it straight up and it will slot out from the battery connectors. You got the fingerprint reader here and it looks like there's a cable that's going along underneath the motherboard. Um, the wireless card here, if you need to pop out the antennas, you go under the tails and pull that up. Um, RAM is here. There's just like every other model, you pull the two tabs to the side, it pops up, and then you can pull it out. This is a DDR4-2400, so you should be able to use any DDR4-2400 RAM or PC4-2400. All right. Um, so this one currently is an 8-gig stick, but yeah, you can probably... I don't know what they have, but I think they have up to 16-gig sticks so far. So you can put two 16-gig sticks for a total of... 32 gigs. Sorry, there was a hair like kind of stuck under the label and I was trying to pull it out. Okay, um, there's another set of wireless uh, antennas here for this WAN card, um, which is usually for a mobile uh, internet card, but some people I think they put SSDs in these, so I don't know what it would support, but uh, CPU is underneath the heatsink here, so two screw or four screws here. And then you can pop that out, but you'd have to also remove the fan, it seems. Fan connectors there. LCD, LVDS connectors here. If you're going to mess with this, make sure you disconnect the battery and unplug the power. And then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds before touching that. All right, and I think that's about it to show here. Um, we are going to be replacing the keyboard. So to do that, there are two screws here, these big ones underneath holding it. So let's get these. All right. Last screw. All right, now that we got those two screws out, we can flip this over. And this keyboard will actually come out really uh, easily if you have like a thin tool like this. Get in the little gap and then you can pop this out. There might be some little clips here, so um, you might have to like pry it up like this. Okay, and then pop that up as well, just like this. All right, once you pop that all up, it helps to kind of like bow it a little bit. Then we're gonna carefully pull it and slide it that way. All right, so the feet come out and then we're gonna lift this. You wanna be careful, there's three cables here. So we're gonna flip this latch. This is the um, keyboard backlight cable. So we're gonna peel this up and then pull that. 
And then we have the keyboard cable here. Flip that latch up and pull that up. Sorry, let's get this up. And then peel that adhesive up and pull that. And then we got one more cable here. All right, give me a second, I'll be back. We do have this cable that we need to transfer over to the new keyboard and the rest will figure it out. All right, give me a second, I'll be back. All right, I'm back, sorry about that. I was responding to some messages. Anyways, here's the replacement keyboard. Basically, same thing. You do have to fold this cable over. They put a little adhesive um, thing here to fold that over on. Um, so basically, we're gonna peel that piece off. Okay, so peel that part out. And then we're gonna fold that on that same diagonal line. Basically, you want it to kind of follow this line here. So fold that, hold that tight here. And then we're gonna fold this over and just pinch it down so where you see that white line you want to follow that if you're wondering what white line i'm talking about let me show you more close up so there's a white line on this coppery orangish brown cable there you go so we're folding it on there and be careful you don't want to like fold it back and forth too much because you don't want to break the internal wiring all right then we're going to remove this cable from this keyboard just flip that latch up once you flip that there's some adhesive, so carefully peel this. I like to pull it that way as I pull up so it's not just creasing it over, okay? You wanna try and keep it flat, just like that. I'll set that aside, flip this latch up. Okay, get this out of the way. And then flip that latch up. All right, then we'll get this cable back in. Careful with it. There we go, push that in all the way, and then slide your finger to latch that back down. Sorry, I know I'm like zoomed out kind of far, but all right, to latch this back down, you just slide your finger over it. If it's not moving, you gotta be very careful. Don't like try and pick it over sideways, you don't wanna break that. All right, then we'll stick this back down, and then we just gotta get all these cables back in. Let me see if I can zoom in and show this, but uh, it might get in the way when I'm working on this, so let's see. All right, we'll flip this up, flip all these latches up. Um, keyboard technically needs to go first. Um, also, they have this adhesive strip. We're going to peel that off. Okay, so peel that off. And then we can let this go down and stick that in. All right. And next, we're going to make sure that latch is up. Get the keyboard cable in. Oops, sorry. Get the keyboard in. It's a little tricky, but get that in. Well, I guess this one's technically the shortest, so let's go ahead and do this one first because it's the longest, right? Is it? I don't know. Actually, this is probably the longest for reach. Okay, so this is for the little joystick moving thing. All right, get that cable in, and then slide your finger over the top to latch it down. Then we'll take the keyboard backlight one, get this in. All right, once that's in, then slide your finger over to latch that down. There we go. And last, the keyboard connector here. Line that up. And push that all in. Okay, make sure that's all good. And then same thing, you want to slide your finger over it, okay? Nope, you need to make sure this is all evenly in there. And all right, then we're just gonna get the keyboard back in by sliding these feet down here into the slot here first. Okay, slide that in. All right, once that's all in, you can push around the side here, push around the side here, and then go along the top. Click it all in, perfect. Then we'll flip this back over, and then we just gotta get the last two in. And it looks like whoever did this battery thing actually didn't install it right. So I'm actually going to fix that. Two screws. Let's go ahead and remove that. Oh, this one's spring-loaded. So maybe that's where they took the spring-loaded screw from, from the battery. All right, now that we got those out, we're going to get under here and pull this up. That's the battery disconnected. Yeah, they took that screw from here, it looks like. Actually, unless they took this screw and took it from somewhere else. So this screw has like a smooth portion and then the threading. So I don't know, whoever did this mixed all the screws around, but anyways, we're gonna 
slide it with the back first because it has these hooks. Oh, and also you can see in here the touchpad, how it works. Touchpad here goes to the buttons, and then they have this going to this board and then going to the motherboard. You also have this going down here into this board. So the touchpad has a lot of stuff going into it, and that's also the smart card reader slot. All right, we'll get this in at an angle like this. That way, these little feet need to hook on top. That's how it's supposed to be. All right, and then once you got those hooked in here, you can't lift from this side. You have to slide it out. All right, so now we lower this and push that in, and let's get these screws in. Okay, and then we'll get this screw in. I'm not sure which spot those two screws came from because there are two of those kinds of screws. I don't know if they're both supposed to be on the battery, but the customer had them all switched around. Anyways, let's go ahead and put the bottom cover back on. Let me zoom out here. Oop, you don't need to zoom out that far. So let's get this all lined up. And okay, so we'll get that. Now that we got that, we're going to go ahead and drop this down on top. It looks like the computer is turning itself on because I see the lights over here lit up. So, oops, sorry. Don't forget the keyboard uh, cables here. I mean screws to hold the keyboard in place. If it's not going in, you'll have to open up the laptop, push up from the bottom, and then get the screw in. And hopefully it's lining up. Yep. Okay, there we go. And get the second screw. Get under there and push that up and get that screw in. Perfect. All right. So, yep, it's on. It says factory default settings loaded because the battery was disconnected. So the battery actually also acts as the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery. Okay, anyways, let's get this thing back together. So just drop it down and we'll tighten all these screws into place. All right, so I'll get that. All right, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, again, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't help out that way, again, it does help a lot if you do watch uh, my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the YouTube algorithm likes to see. All right, so let's just get all these screws back in and we're good to go. All right, it already powered up so we know it's good. Um, and then obviously you wanna check the keyboard by pressing all the little keys to make sure everything's good. But yeah, let's get the last two screws in and I'll see you all in the next one. All right. Okay, let's drop this. Bye.